I'm going to work on square rigging and industrialization because I like the idea of getting coal and ironclads and maybe even going to flight. I don't know, we'll see how this goes, but I've surrounded this city. I've, I've been a trebuchet hit really hard on those walls and Lord Sucklington is just ready to walk in. But luckily, it's only ancient walls and I have both battering ram and a siege tower next to the city. So I can do a couple of attacks on this and just disintegrate the city. Lord Sucklington, just walk in for me, please. Thank you so much. Oh. That's a big hit. Look at that. Rebellion in 12 turns, but I'm hoping... Oh yeah, this is really stabilizing the loyalty in these cities now. That is lovely to see. Actually, I'm gonna move Rainer over to the new city. That should be wonderful. The borders are gonna be really messy. They're gonna be really, really messy. You're just gonna have to use a bit of imagination that we're trying to do this in a sort of historical way. Yeah, I mean, I could take this city to just even the borders up a little bit. Just feel bad. Now, I'm gonna leave it unless I absolutely have to take it. Right, units through. Oh, I just miss clicking all over the place at the moment. Units through. We're gonna just continue just to hit these trebuchets as much as we can. We're gonna go for their capital now. Wait, if we're only figuring out that we're human now, what were we before? Oh, don't like the answer to that question. Let's not think about that too much. Finally, though, mercantilism. Let's figure out where the luxuries are and whether or not I'm actually likely at all to get any monopoly already. <laughs> Oh man, I think I'm the culture leader actually saying that, like 358 though. Oh my lord, I think it was actually Canada. That's crazy, 357 domestic tourists, right? Yeah, Canada only has 197 culture per turn. It's not that high. That's mad. I think this must be skewed based on the number of people in the game. It must be. Oh, thank goodness the listening post is finally there in Zulu territory. Oh, this has been a slog, but that will make it a little bit quicker for me. I tell you what though, Congo has had a Corsa still on this hill for the best part of this entire war, and it is the most annoyingly troll-based unit, because I really want to move my units through that line and I can't. They know exactly what they're doing, that is absolutely deliberate. Luckily though, my crossbows are starting to do just a little bit more damage now that we have that extra diplomatic visibility, is, is a good thing. So if we hit the trebuchet once more into the city, I know that it's got a promotion, it's not that important. Uh, Lord Suckling. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. okay. Yeah, vampire's good. Well, I might as well just uh, hit once for the road. Bam. And um, oh, the knight can't quite finish it off. But that, I mean, it's close. It's very close. In fact, actually, I'll just attack there. Oh, you know what? A general wasn't involved. There we go. Let's try again. Come on, let's do it. Oh. Oh, come on, two health in the city. That's just silly. Never mind. Once we can take this city from Zulu, we can peace out. I can go after this city from Congo, and then that's it. We have taken over all of the major colonies we need, and I know it's, it's about working on alliances to make sure that we have the treaty cities uh, where possible. One thing I'm actually going to do, I know I'm not going to keep this city, but I'm actually going to conquer it, because then I can give it back to the Zulu in the peace deal, reduce grievances a little bit, and get a better gold deal from them, because I am just evil. I'm just, that's exactly the sort of thing that I will do. Well, here we go. My war against Zulu is, thankfully, it's going to be over very soon. Hang on, let me just quickly trebuchet this once more. It says major victory with my knight. I will take it on good authority that it is. Beautiful. Keep city. Lovely. Rebellion in 10 turns. Really? Ah, oh, that's no fun. I'll tell you what will help. What will help is if I just uh, treat myself just uh, to this city here, like so. I'm in the... You, you know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> How's the loyalty doing here? It's nowhere near as bad now. Hey Zulu, would you like peace? <laughs> Does this count as war crimes? I'm worried this counts as war crimes. Oh dear. Oh no. Right, anyway, we're at peace with Zulu now. Oh look, Scotland's happy we're at peace. Hey! So now what we can do is um, we can just really rub this in by going and buying all the tiles around them now. Yeah. Sorry, Zulu, that's um, it's not going to work for you. Actually, I'm just going to make sure that I've got all of these ones that they could easily get to, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's made me so happy. Um, actually, I'm just going to move Victor down a little bit to the new capital. It'll just help to really consolidate it a little bit more. I've been trying to liberate this city before it flips as well. Um, I can even sacrifice a unit or two to do it, but unfortunately there's a musket that keeps standing in the city and it gets way too powerful. So that'll flip to Congo without me being able to really do anything about it. Never mind. Um, we 
can't surprise war Congo just yet. Two turns, but we're almost there. So if we just heal up my army, make sure Lord Sucklington is ready to go. I mean, let's face it, nothing, nothing can stop Lord Sucklington now. We have an absolute unit of the vampire. No wonder this absolute unit is in charge of the University of San Corre. Look at that cape. Oh, something to aspire to in life. So my main competition on these aid requests are Cree. They seem to be pumping out projects like nobody's business. However, they are only involved in the one aid request. And I think that's because they haven't met many people yet. Yeah, not as many people as they would need to. Although I think they met Zulu. No, they haven't met Zulu. So sometimes the AI don't join aid requests. And I like I like the idea. Can I just say, this is what I'm contending with right now. Let me just, let me just show you this. I am limited by visibility. Look how many units are on this map. Look at it. Look at it. You can't see all of Norway's uh, units right now. They have boats on every tile around their territory. It is crazy. Most of the world tension is just being caused by the fact that AI has so many troops, they can't put them anywhere but next to each other's borders, and it's causing so much anxiety for everyone. It's so funny. This is this is what I'm contending with right now. What I'm doing just uh, to amuse myself is I'm making tons of apostles, and I'm going to start spreading my religion now across Europe. We're just doing this systematically. South America is done. So we'll do Europe next, then I'll then I'll do Africa in a second. Uh, I have some missionaries that are just about to make landfall here, which is lovely. We are covering ourselves with as many victory conditions as we can get away with right now. You know what I'm most excited about square rigging? It's not the frigates. It's the one movement from barked units. Oh, goodness me, that's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's a big difference. Hang on, where's my spy? My spy in Zulu territory. Cancel your assignment. I never knew you could cancel spy assignments, and since I figured that out, my lord, that has been life-changing. Right, quickly, get over to Congo. We're going to start to do some more disruptive things. Uh, nope, that's a city that... Again, let's send to the... There's nothing to do in that city. Come on, we're going to have to go to the other one again. Can we declare war yet? Can we do it? Yes, yes, we can declare war now. Spain are at war with them as well. Australia could be. England could be. However, I might be able to... Oh, bring Nubia into a war. Oh yeah, go on then. Let's just do it. Let's just have some fun. This is the last hurrah on Africa. Oh, Gandhi just called me bloodthirsty. Just wait until you have nukes, good friend. You'll get there. Lord Sucklington, again, bravely leading the charge, is going to consume that man at arms. And oh, look, it's a bunch of trebuchets stood right next to him. Oh. These units are so much easier to kill. No military alliance here. Zulu had a military alliance the entire fight with them, and it was, like, the most annoying thing. Whoa, these are Renaissance walls. Oh, goodness me. That's that's no fun. Don't they know that that's no fun? We don't like Renaissance walls. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. By the way, whilst this is all still happening, I'm still making all the cheeky liberation plays I can. Just removes grievances from me, gives me lovely diplomatic favour. It's all wonderful. Look at this. Beautiful. That's your capital, by the way, Inca. Can you please hold on to it? Actually, no, I say that. Don't hold on to it. It's much more fun this way. Oh, what are the Cree doing? They are powering out those routes. And um, by the way, India, don't you feel, don't you feel like you can break away from this friendship? I want to be your friend forever. I apologize in advance Spain I'm gonna be um yeah sorry I'm gonna be a real pain here <laughs> I want my religion everywhere and you've got missionaries just hanging around there is actual religion now on Africa as well I'm just aiming for this holy site then I can buy missionaries and inquisitors over here spread myself around a little bit quicker that should be lovely oh my units are being wrecked don't worry, Lord Sucklington is here. Lord Sucklington knows what to do. Now, unfortunately, again, Renaissance Wars, so a lot of my usual strategies are just not going to work here, but that's okay, because my line inventory can do a semi-decent hit, and then Lord Sucklington's just going to ignore everything and just start attacking the city directly. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Plus, we can attack this city from the Congo, take it. Um, again, we're going to do my usual trick of, do I just, oh yeah, I'm just going to raise it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being nasty. Anything that will help me to get loyalty in this area. Anything. I am I am not above any diabolical play here. There we go. There's the city sieged. <laughs> Don't mind me, Madrid. I'm just um just lurking all of my units around your land. It's all fine. It's all good. So we just attack the city with the line inventory and now with my boat, every little kink 
that works its way out of this city though. It just gives Lord Sucklington another chance to... Oh, that's so much damage. That's crazy. You know, this time Lord Sucklington's not even going to make the killing blow. I'm going to take the city and just be content and then Lord Sucklington's just going to go after this trebuchet. And that's the last we're going to see of Lord Sucklington for a little while because whilst I'm at war, I'm just going to go on a little tour. We're just going to tour around and uh, see how many kills we can get. I reckon we can get quite a few. Yep, loyalty is just becoming easier and easier and easier now I've got this. That's kind of all of the cities that I wanted to take now. So I feel like... If we check in with how we're doing now. So obviously we have Portugal of the mainland. I sort of have a Cape Verde. We have a sort of Cuta and I'm calling this Guinea. It's, it's a little bit like, yeah, who knows? Brazil obviously is there. I'm calling this a very large Angola. Probably shouldn't be down here, but what you're gonna do? In fact, actually this city probably, this one is probably a little bit of overkill, but what can you do? Mozambique, I think that's actually close enough. That's not too bad. We're allied with India for our treaty ports in Bombay, Calcutta, Goa, all of these sort of ones. I'm working on a friendship and an alliance with Phoenicia. The only problem is they don't have enough culture and they haven't discovered what alliances are, but that will give me my trading posts in Muscat. And I need to get the grievances down, then I can start making friendship with a lot of other people. Kind of. Oh, Indonesia's got knocked out of the game by Australia. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Australia, what are you doing? Look at this. This is coupe. This is this is how you should be playing this. Oh dear. Um, yeah, but, but we're, I think we're, we're actually doing this really well. I'm so pleased with what we've managed to sort of pull off. It's basically what I'm going to be doing now is letting this war with Congo run out a little bit, keeping my army on the defensive inevitably for the next military emergencies. It will come through. There will be another world war. At no, like, I, it just will be at some point. So I've got to be ready for that. I'm going to switch now to industry, science, faith, economy, those sort of things. We've got a lot of things that we can be doing here. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, well, guess what happened, by the way? Our governor just got killed by a spy. Yep, 61 players. Spies have become a thing. Ah, oh, this is my favorite and most excitable part of the game. This is what I was really looking forward to. <laughs> really looking forward to this. My Lord, Cree are really going for this aid competition. Wow. I have every city that I own going for these projects and they've already completed 17 of them? To my seven that's that oh blimey yeah anyway lord sucklington is uh currently just on a little cruise a uh, yum 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 just going to continue just munching through the congo's troops until they make peace with me uh, it sounds sounds fair to me well hey so there's industrialization and we have some coal coming in that's a good sign we'll go through that in a second but i'm just seeing what i could be getting after this and i'm thinking steam power might actually be really good for me because that movement from embarked units that's big news that's really big news. I could also go for economics for corporations. I could boost towards oil to see what we can do in terms of like artillery. I could go flight. I could go chemistry. There's a lot of things I can do. However, steam power means railroads. And let's face it, this is an Ursa game. So we're going to go railroads as quickly as we can. Let's have a little look in terms of coal, however. So none in Iberia that I can get to. None in my North African holdings. There is some under a farm. In fact, Mozambique has two sets because there's one under this campus already. Perfect. Right, you go and claim that. That's lovely stuff. What about Brazil? Oh, right on the border there. Actually, if we can liberate the city, I don't think we can pinch tiles before we give it back but I'll give it a try. Maybe that's something we can do. So there's only 25 sources on this entire map. It's really not much. Okay, fine. Right, so we've got two sources. We don't have many cities. That should be plenty, as long as I'm economical with it. So, uh, we're going to get that second source. However, Lisbon, I mean, I might as well just go straight for the coal power plant. It's a big production boost. Lovely stuff. In fact, actually, everywhere that's got an industrial zone, I've saved up about 15,000 gold for this very reason. Being rich is great. <laughs> you can just go and uh, buy yourself stuff all the time. I will start generating quite a considerable amount of CO2 doing this, which isn't ideal because, of course, I am doing aid requests. But if it gives me the production to do more projects, I think it works out better for me in the long run. Right? I just need one more coal power plant in this city and we are totally industrialized already. I went against a, a great merchant, by the way. I could have bought one for about 40,000 gold. And before that, there was one for about 25,000 gold. However, I didn't need to rush it. I was like, I might as well just work mercantilism. We'll just see how we go. And, uh... Yeah, Sucklington is just... Sucklington's having fun. I won't lie. 
Eat, 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 eat. Yes, that's exactly right. What are we up to now? 107. That includes one from Barbarians and 39 from Unit Kills. Nice. I feel like we can get higher than that, though. We can get much higher than that. The best thing about having Portugal's level of money is that when you get crazy peace deals to break people out of military emergencies, you can just be like, um, well, hang on. If I give you some luxuries and, like, a thousand gold? Yeah, that's like half a turn's worth of gold for me. I don't even mind giving that up. It's fine. Also, I've taken this other city from Congo, which is relatively amusing. I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to raise it because it's not part of the TSL land that I'm sticking to, but still relatively amusing. All right, we have mercantilism. I'm keeping raid in just for a little bit because Lord Sucklington is having a lot of fun. However, this religious orders card, I could replace that with triangular trade, upgrading from the square-based trading that we were on before. Could be cool, could be cool. Um, religious orders is quite handy though because I am spreading my religion and I am trying to get that victory, so I'll leave it for now. And I think the science and culture is better than the golden faith. We ugh, need more, more, more trade, uh, more, more policy slots would be great. However, mercantilism gives me a useful thing, which is how much do we need for a monopoly? Now, there actually are a couple of monopolies already. I have one of the coca, but the Mayans have the other two, and that gives them a monopoly. The Aztecs also has a monopoly on tobacco, something, again, I have a little bit of. There's a turtle monopoly. Unbelievably, Coupe has a turtle monopoly. That's crazy. Salt, 10 in the entire land, and as you can see, oh kind of scattered around there. Only nine of it is accounted for though, but that's going to be quite tricky to get. Diamond 17 on the map. Yeah, that's a bit too much for me. Oh, Mercury though. Only one copy of Mercury. That's a monopoly. Where is that? Where is the Mercury? Oh, it's there. It's difficult, but that is within culture bomb territory. If this goes through at some point and I can culture bomb, that will be amazing. So we're going to keep an eye out for that. Nubia has got a lot of honey. That kind of stops me there. 40 copies of pearls. Coupe is doing their best, but no, unlikely to be a thing. So actually, yeah, Aztecs and the Mayans and Coupe all have monopolies already. Are they getting any tourism from it? No, I don't think they're generating enough. I think I'm going to go civil engineering. I need to get my mitts on Statue of Liberty, I believe. <laughs> One slightly problematic thing as well is I have no source of woods in my entire empire. So yeah, I would be able to build... Uh, actually, the Mahabodhi Temple has been built now. I was kind of keeping an eye on that one. Yeah, Tamiris did it. That's good. There was no woods in my... I was going to have to go to conservation. Now, you know, you may say, oh, but Ursa, you chopped it all down. It's your own fault. And to that, I would say, yeah, that's probably fair. But <laughs> that's why I haven't got that one. Um, yeah, Cree still doing their thing. I'm generating a little CO2, but as a lot of other people are now generating a lot of aid requests, I'm having to throw my entire production into keeping these going. I have a lot of competition. Some of them doing okay, but if there's Cree involved, 4,600 is a lot. Um, Mali's giving it a go, as is Ethiopia as well. So there's, there's a lot of competition, but I've now got all of my cities going on them and they're generating quite a few projects between them. So we should be fine. Now I see this getting asked a lot. So we're going to just clarify a couple of things quickly with Cusco. Right, this is a city that I am liberating. It is the Incan capital. I keep getting a lot of points for doing it. In yeah, unless I press the keep city button, I can't swap tiles between my city. So I can't be nabbing things like the coal tile from it or even the spices tile. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work like that. I'd have to keep the city. Now, if I keep the city, I can't give it back to the Incans because it counts as a capital and you can't trade capitals. So this city would be stuck with me forever. I can't do anything with it. It's just, it is what it is. So I have no choice but to liberate from it. it and unfortunately, it would be really, really handy if I could give it back um, with all of these tiles taken away from it. But alas, it just doesn't work like that. I always like this one. I know we're playing Portugal, but this feels like the most British achievement you can get. Paradoxically, the citizens of Lisbon are both incredibly proud of their city's size and yet never stop complaining about how crowded it's gotten. Yeah, that feels like London. Everything that happens in London. Oh yeah, London's so cool. It's so busy. Everything's happening. You can do anything you want. There's too many people in London. That's right. Continue feeding Lord Sucklington. Yes. I don't even need this city. This is not a city I need. I, I could even make peace right now. I will make peace. I was just like, one more kill. One more. Actually, that's a decent gold deal. There we go. For the first time in about 100 turns, we are at peace with everyone currently. I have the land that I want. Portugal mainland. Check. Cape Verde-ish. Check. Brazil. 
Czech. North Africa, Czech. South African colonies of Angola and Mozambique, Czech. Now, diplomacy must reign. India. Actually, yes, India. If you can take Malgam from Babylon, sort of Ormuz is sort of around here somewhere, and that'll be, like, vague enough. Oh, my God, Forbidden City. You see, look, they stole Forbidden City from me, and they can't even keep it. Babylon, what are you doing? Come on. I bet University of St. Cor's in this city and everything. Just to, just to really, really rub it in. I need India as a treaty port friend. They are already allied to me. I will hold on to this. I, the British is Portugal, UK, old ancient alliance. I like that as well. Now I need to work on Coupe and probably Australia as being the sort of other ones. And maybe, ah, oh, you know what? Vietnam. Those are the three. I don't think anyone really likes me. Yeah, look, here we go. Vietnam does not like me at all, and my grievances are the problem here. Coupe is exactly the same, and Australia will like the fact that I've been liberating. They don't like me for any other reason. So, grievances are the name of the game right now. We have 230 with Mapuche going down 7 per turn. That's 30 turns it'll take to disappear. Only three grievances with, with Boulevard, really? Huh. They've almost forgiven me. That's mad. Yeah, this is a bit more of a problem. 370 with Congo, and I bet Zulu's not happy with me. 421 with Zulu. Only minus five that's going down. Ho 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 ho. Yeah, it's because I have their capital. Fine. So the more they denounce me, the more I will lose. Also, so that's good. So the grievances will go down. But these liberations, 32 every turn. That's like six turns worth. So we need to get our liberation force out. We need to keep going around the world. We need to keep doing this. Cusco, this Incan city there, is a fantastic source of liberation for us. But if we can find more, we shall. This Congo city, that will flip soon. That'll be a really good one of it. It does have Renaissance walls. So I'm going to have to make sure my frigates are kind of around and ready to go on that city it's going to be tough but that will help and it's all about just making sure we've got the aid request oh i'm catching up with cree slowly but surely we're catching up with cree good 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 this this game is it's doing okay we're just we just need to keep doing the hard work now i've also now converted south africa to my religion and we're going to start pushing up this is egypt's religion what i'm going to do is focus instead of converting portions of the map i'm gonna try to knock out uh, religions one by one so there's currently one city remaining following this religion there it's this one so let's go and take that out with a couple of missionaries like so these all have lovely amounts of charges that's all good one and then two beautiful stuff and then we're just gonna cycle through uh, India's religion, that's probably a difficult one to deal with, but Egypt's got one, Byzantium's got one, Kemen's, we can take that out pretty easily, oh, the other India lost theirs really quickly, Spain's is gone now, Saivia's got one, Norway's got one, so we're going to focus on taking the religions out, not the cities. Well, hey, the religious emergency has gone through as well, that's really handy, because that means we get two-handed diplomatic favour, but I'm spreading my religion around nicely as well. If I ever took a city over, I'd get a burst of religion every time I did it, as well which is also really really handy i just realized i just let a load of friendships expire and i think they're all disappearing oh yeah dido was my friend ah and i've lost those until we get the grievances sorted out this is going to be a permanent issue for us so we'll keep trying to get this one going oh look there we go we've got egypt on friend that's that's good you know what i was thinking there's not enough aid requests in this game so um yes let's let's do another one why not oh what just got killed pingala no oh my spies are abroad they're abroad doing things i'm gonna have to cancel them and bring them back immediately ah oh, that's annoying i don't like the fact that my governors keep getting killed 64 people involved in this one why are people voting seven times for i'm not complaining it just means that the votes later on are going to be easier for me but still it's a crazy amount of votes to be putting on an aid request don't do it think Think before you vote. Anyway, look, my spies are, they're busy spying and being really annoying, but you're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to do this. Abort mission. Abort. Abort. Come home. I need you to protect my lovely land from what is probably 60 different civs trying to spy on me all at once. Where are you? No, nope, that's not you. Where are you? I can't see the flipping symbol. There we go. Two turns to get home. That's good. Uh, governor titles. Yep. Pingala's dead now. Oh, Moksha's back alive. You had died previously, but that's all fine now. Oh, Norway. Come out, come out wherever you are. I'm going to start spreading my religion around your land, so you better bring your missionaries out. Oh, can I just say, also, points for the Dutch for actually putting polders around Amsterdam. Yes. 
Netherlands. This is what we like to see. This is wonderful. Oh, if any of you owned uh, Denmark, then that would have been even better. But still, Actually, this is quite a clever way of doing it. I've got a screenshot mode on that's taken all the units out. Let's have a quick look and see what the map looks like, okay? Spain had a tough start, but they have actually managed to get some decent population in most of their cities, apart from Seville and Bilbao over there. But it's not a bad Iberia. Spain have not managed to colonize anyway. It's a very full map. So, you know, it's not like Victoria 3 where certain continents are weaker and you can just colonize them. It's always going to be tough, but they've done okay. Europe is a bit of a mess, but actually the Dutch and Poland have come out of Europe as the strongest. Rome, why Rome haven't settled out a bit more? I don't know. I think maybe these cities keep getting destroyed. I'm not sure. Greece, Byzantium, Byzantium hasn't done anything and that's really disappointing. Russia has lost out, but between Mongolia and Saivia, they own all of this land because their score is really big. So these two are doing fantastic and Russia is being sat upon. England managed to steal Iceland, which is relatively amusing, um, but otherwise nothing's really happening. Egypt has got a solid game going on, even with three cities. Nubia actually has done okay, as is Ethiopia. Congo were probably game leading until I turned up and the Zulu were doing pretty good as well. Coupe, having a casual Coupe game. They have Antarctica. They have, um, what's over here? This is, oh, I forget the names of the cities are around here, but like Coupe is, is spreading out nicely kind of around Australia. They have obviously New Zealand. They've also got Hawaii. Um, they've got both sides of Antarctica actually, which is just lovely to see. What is Norway's religion doing over in Antarctica? Norway, you're mad. Oh, did you? Ah, uh, they might have actually gone through the uh, Bermuda Triangle. Thinking about it, that's probably what they did. Now, Vietnam is having a really good game. They could be settling out a little bit more, but they're doing pretty solid. India, still divided. If, 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 if one India managed to take the other over and have a unified continent or subcontinent over here, that would have been hugely powerful two cities that Chandragupta has. If, yeah, Gandhi, go go and unify. Dido, just doing Phoenician things. Um, yeah, no one's really come out of this area. As I say, the, the leaders at the moment, Saivia and um, Mongolia. Mongolia is doing really, really well as well. Korea, kind of stuck to Korea uh, and a little bit of the sort of side of Siberia. Japan having a really low-key, solid game. Uh, apart from like South Japan and Korea is kind of infiltrated over a little bit, they've got most of their land sorted and 19 population total is nothing to be ashamed of at all. That's really good. Um, America, Canada is actually doing the best out of everyone. They obviously do really well in the tundra, so they're using all of this terrible land to the north. I'm sorry, Canada, your country is lovely. It is not terrible land to the north. <laughs> Aztecs, America and Cree are all kind of 50-50 on who's doing well. Cree is actually doing pretty good. They seem to have gone down into California really wisely. Mayans taking advantage of a weak Gran Colombia. Um, I have liberated a couple of cities to Gran Colombia, so they're not losing these things. And this actually has flipped from Inca to Gran Colombia. Incans, Mapuche. Mapuche is still doing pretty well, considering I took uh, three cities from them. Mapuche would have been doing amazingly, but they have been my hardest fight so far, easily. Yeah, but that's what the map looks like. It's looking crazy. My, my empire looks pretty big, but it doesn't look crazy big in comparison to what everyone else is going for. Like, I've got 17 cities. That is a lot. If we have a look at the score, you'll see that it's Canada, Coupe, Congo, Poundmaker. These are the people doing the best otherwise. Canada has 12 cities. Pretty damn good. Oh my goodness. It's like Christmas. It's steam power. Railroad. We're putting down railroad everywhere. All right, so we've got to get some military uh, engineers going. I could build a couple of canals if I want to as well. Oh, it's just, it's just infinite options, infinite possibilities. Also, Cusco keeps flipping and I love it. I'm all about that. I've got a line inventory now that can just go wabam. Let's do that. Now that I have steam power, uh, what do I realistically want? I could go for a seaport. That would give me access... Sorry, I should say electricity, which gives me access to the seaport. Then I could build out some really, really good navies pretty quickly if I wanted to. Uh, it would also give me more food and housing and a bunch more gold. Oil power plants are fun. Submarines are fun. I could also build some hydroelectric dams, which would be really handy for my energy consumption. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go electricity. Why not? We've got to own two privateers to do that, though. So wouldn't it be wouldn't it be a shame if I could you know if I couldn't build privateers really quickly? Um, oh wait, if I build that one, then two will appear. So you know, Lisbon Lisbon will do that for me nicely. Oh, these routes are so good. 
All right, spies, you're underleveled. You're really rubbish, but you know what you need to be doing. Counter spy, get the counter spying in. I don't have time to train you. You have to stop my governors from being killed. This is getting ridiculous. Um, okay, so what I've done is I've got all my religious units. I'm just parking them around Norway. And I'm going to just start converting their holy city. It's going to take some time, but this should, in theory, lure all of their religious units out. And I've got units parked near their holy sites so I can see when they respond. Kind of the idea anyway. Also, one little cheeky hit, two little cheeky hits, and then, hello, line inventory. Introduce yourself to Cusco yet again. How many times have I got to liberate this city? Actually, the best bit is that the more I do it, the more the population just falls away in this city and it gets harder and harder to hold. It's, it's wonderful. It's really good, and every time, every time I just get less and less grievances. Ah, oh, promise refused and continued behavior, yeah, yeah. Here we go, we're starting to build railroad now. I may have uh, indulged in a couple, a couple of military engineers everywhere. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I always have a very measured and reasonable uh, expectation of the amount of military engineers I should build. He says building more. We've got about 700 religious units around Norway and nothing. This will get their attention. Hey, Norway, this is your holy city. What you gonna do about it, eh? Yes, there we go. I knew they wouldn't be able to resist it. Okay, killing a couple of missionaries does a huge amount, but the Holy City is converted. I've also just about to do the Hague, and then this. If we can basically just knock out the religion from the people that then own the religion, I feel like that's a good option, you know? It's a, it's a good methodical way of making sure that we could potentially get this religious victory sorted. Now, I am building rail. It's finally happening. I am coal limited, though, and I don't think anyone has really researched what coal is apart from me so there's no one to trade with we are very coal limited so there's only mu so much rail we can do at any one point but it's okay it's okay it's okay he says absolutely trying not to have a railroad related incident for whatever reason all of the clever architects and civil engineers in my empire just stopped you know having slogging matches and insulting each other because now we have civil engineering <laughs> oh come on you can build skyscrapers better you know what this is just such a good little mix of a raid is no longer important for me that is rubbish I'll put craftsmen in instead but everything else is looking pretty neat spreading my religion getting everything else I need right now. Still hemorrhaging diplomatic favor, unfortunately. That's just because I own so many capitals. And oh yeah, of course, carbon emissions. Yes, that's right. All my railroad building is not very healthy for the environment, is it? Now, with a guru, I think I can just murder the missionary in one hit. Yes, I can. Beautiful. This will spread my religion nicely. Oh, having units that can actually move around the map quickly because of uh, steam power makes such a huge difference. It really does. Anyway, I, one thing I was looking at was, we look at domination. This curtain. Now, curtain took Indonesia out of the game by taking this city, and there's only medieval walls there. I've been looking for something to do. So Lord Sucklington is on the way over and I think I'm actually just going to bring my fleet around. Not all of it, but enough of it. Enough of it. And then what I might do is declare war on Australia and liberate Indonesia back into the game. That will give me 300 favor and a massive reduction in grievances. And because Curtin's all about liberating, they'll have my begrudging respect or they will respect me in, in like through gritted teeth. It'll be hilarious. I think that's a really good option. Gaul now apparently has this France as well, which will rebel in two turns. That's interesting enough, but what I can do is actually get my horsemen, get a cavalry, and then see if I can run this cavalry in and do the whole liberation trick. That, 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 yeah, that's a cap. That's a very powerful unit. Should be fine. I'll build myself a second just in case. Just in case. And immunities is still my base problem. So we're going to go astronomy, uh, sorry, um, colonialism, and then natural history. We're going to head up this way to unlock water parks, zoos, aquariums, all of that stuff. That's me is better and now we have governors now first of all pingala get back in lisbon do i want to upgrade sanguine pact the short answer is yes gives me a second vampire and allows me to construct vampire castles now we said originally what i wanted to do was to create vampire castles in different continents one in brazil one in africa what I'm going to do is try and do that and make the best yields and send them back to my capital. So this vampire, got to have a, a sort of building name. 
I'm gonna name it Bob the Builder because that seems to be a respectable vampire name. So off you go, Bob. Let's make our way to Brazil. Um, I mean, in theory, we could make a huge production area just like with a with a like an arrangement like this. Or do I go for food and just pop it there? There are a lot of options. Lisbon has a housing crisis as well as amenities. So I'm thinking maybe production is more useful than food at this point. But it's pretty close. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll let inspiration take us when we arrive, I think. So we are neck and neck with Cree at the moment on this aid project. We're going to keep an eye on it because we can always just dump a little bit of gold into Japan if we need to. But I'm going to, right at the last moment, as, uh, as my you know countries are doing interesting things, I'm going to start to do a couple of other bits and pieces. We have options now. There are three wonders that I would love to build in my capital. Torre de Belém, Ruhr Valley, and Statue of Liberty. Now, Torre de Belém gives me extra gold for every international trade route. Guess what? I have a lot of those. <laughs> And it also puts walls up in most of my uh, international cities as well, which is really handy. That would help to give me just a little bit more diplomatic favor if I went back to monarchy. Um, I might not, but it is something that I could do if diplomacy was really what I wanted to go for. Ruhr Valley gives me 20% production in the city as well as extra production for mines. Honestly, it's going to be basically districts in this city, so there's not much else going on. And then Statue of Liberty gives me four diplomacy points. All four of them I want. What I'm going to do is I'll build Ruhr Valley first because this basically improves the production for everything else then I'll go Statue of Liberty sorry giant crabs it's gonna be awful because that'll help me with my actual victory condition and then Torre de Belém just for Lisbon RP but also because I have so many trade routes coming out of this city that would genuinely be an amazing wonder for me to pick up so, what can I do to rush them? At the moment, Da Vinci is still the engineer of choice. I'm saving up my gold. I think I might actually purchase Da Vinci because these, I can get to use them twice. That's two boosts from the modern era. And there's a lot of modern era text that I haven't boosted yet. So that could be really, really handy. But after, after we get past the beauty that is George R. R. Martin, you can see we also have Filippo, who I'd be able to use three times for about 945 production. That would basically rush Royal Valley through and would help massively. Uh, I could also change out of religious orders if I wanted to, if I wanted to build that a little bit quicker. So we have options now. I just have to keep an eye on the aid requests. The one to Shaka is looking fairly stable, as is the one to Genghis Khan. Korea as well, no one's really competing with me. Um, we've got the Mayans, the Korea there, we've got to keep an eye on that one. And then Sweden, it's Canada. It's basically just this Japanese one, and that's looking a little bit fishy. Well, as I say, we can always dump a load of gold nearer the time if we need to. That's not a problem for us. Turn 218, and Margaret Cavendish is on our side, as well as Leonardo da Vinci gonna spend 16,000 gold why not why not oh come on I hate when that happens oh, the next one was for no points at all so yeah I should have known that was coming the wonder construction is going to Cree never mind never mind at any rate we can move our cavalry to Leon lovely and oh yeah we'll be able to take that city over very quickly that's lovely to see i'm holding off on the liberation of leon just until i know that i can get the final blow because i want the lee <laughs> i want all the benefits the da vinci in your pop chemistry lovely stuff that's what we want to see oh now it's the terrible engineer you know that oh, all I wanted was the was the wonder builder. Never mind. I'll liberate Cusco again. That seems to be doing well for me. Just give myself a little bit more diplomatic favor for the voting. Remove my grievances even further. Uh, here we go. You see, it's always worth waiting. One attack and then two. It's, it's going to give it one attack, isn't it? So I didn't have to wait at all. I could have just literally taken the city. Never mind. Another liberation. Another hundred diplomatic favor. Another bunch of grievances reduced. I'm down to minus four now. That's awesome. Plus, I've got a couple of hydroelectric dams that are going to bring down my carbon output a little bit, so my diplomacy favor will start to come back a little bit. Finally, investing a little bit in a bunch of new apostles as well. Uh, Mali has a religion, so we need to take that out. Egypt's religion's here. Ethiopia's got one. I think even Nubia has one as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but we can get rid of this all. If I can convert Africa, that's a big step towards my religious domination plan. Ooh, it's all going on in Ethiopia's lands. We are having some proper religious combat here. If I can spread my religion around at all, it'll be brilliant. I'm up to above 100 culture per turn from my religion as well, which in itself is a really good improvement. We like that a lot. We can get it higher though. We can get it higher. We will continue to push and push and push. 
push and look for because there's another chunk of religion. I don't think I've managed to flip anything just yet, but it'll be close. Double strike here. We can get this missionary defeated. Beautiful. And then I can get this apostle defeated, which has just been made to then go and tackle me. No, you think you're going to survive, but you're not. Bam. How's this doing? Has any city flipped to me just yet? Not yet. They will be close now. Oh, we are whittling down this religion. And Marley, don't you think that you can escape this as well? You are going to very much be invited to my apostle party. Actually, Sunni, this religion was much more recently created, so we can get rid of that much quicker. One thing we now can do is declare war on Australia. Now, what I'm looking for is anybody that I could join in with a war with that would give me a military alliance. Now, not many people are crazy enough to go to war with Australia, but there may be someone you never know. We're going to have to search long and hard. Nope, scrap that. Spain will do it. Here we go, the Iberian Alliance, Portugal and Spain declaring war on Australia. Um, I can't make an alliance with them. That was pointless. Let's try again. Ah, no, it's not going to happen. Anyway, doesn't matter. Lord Sucklington. Oh, hello. Here you are. And here appears to be a bunch of Australian units all embarked in the sea. That's a terrible place to leave your units with Lord Sucklington just sort of lurking around. Let's pick up a bunch of three kills. That sounds, that sounds very fun. Oh, plus the aid requests are about to run out. I think all of them I'm pretty comfortable on, apart from this one with Japan. It's too close. So I'm going to go to Japan. Where are you? It's easy to find people on the map and it is on the menu these days. It's crazy. I'm just going to give them 2,500 gold. That should be enough to just bribe my way to this victory. Hopefully. Hopefully anyway. Well, it's World Congress time and we have a bit of an interesting situation here because these are two things that the AI really doesn't care about. And one of them, sovereignty, well, there are no city states on this map at all. So this is just the most ridiculous thing. Now, world religion is interesting. People typically don't really care about religion and will only put one vote in each generally and we won this last time so i'm gonna force this one through seven votes for myself it's really handy because i'm using it to actually kill other religions pretty effectively sovereignty people tend to vote a on this one rather than b and i've noticed that the ai historically has always favored science over anything else when given a sort of even map you often see scientific city state go through at the expense of all of the others i this is just something i've noticed i'm gonna put four votes into it just because we'll see what happens but i just generally speaking the ai goes for anything science related or anything that would give science well it looks like we have won both and um i wasn't joking <laughs> I told you, the AI loves anything to do with science, and when given nothing else, that is crazy. Every single sieve has gone science. I am actually quite proud of that take. That is brilliant. I, I managed to force this through. Looks like Spain have actually voted against my religion, which is cheeky, as has Arabia. People voting against it where they can, but nobody really cares about religion enough, so my votes were enough to push that through. Beautiful. We are now on a whopping three points. Three! I also now have electricity. Lovely stuff. So, what I'm going to do is focus on getting... I mean, Patala Palace has already been built, unfortunately, but what else would be useful? Corporations? Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So, astronomy, banking, metal casting, scientific theory. I need enlightenment, but I'll get that soon, and I'm actually going to switch my civic because I'm going to get this one anyway very soon. In fact, there we go. We'll get enlightenment in a second. Beautiful. This is all coming together now. Ethiopia, I don't think you understand what a religious victory is all about, do you? I am, I'm going to be, yeah, that was their holy city. Okay, yeah, no, no wonder they were a little bit annoyed about that one, but what are you going to do? Oh, Norway has some apostles, uh, some missionaries down here. Let's go find them. Well, here is the turn of turns. The aid request appears to have gone through, um, and I appear to have won all of them. Fingers crossed. I mean, I was putting every single city onto production, and that's all they did for about 30 turns. I also want a military emergency. Not that that really helps, but I've got 682 diplomatic favor now. That's looking lovely. And 13 points. Oh, 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 oh. So we just need 
Statue of Liberty, which I'm building now because annoyingly the spy got through and took out my industrial zone because my spy is over here. I mean, makes sense. Doesn't stop it being annoying though. Just have to go and fix this sort of stuff. But I realize as well we've got seaports that I can put down. That is something I should be doing. That will give all of my cities a little bit more housing, a little bit more gold, more admiral points. Just all the good stuff really. This is what I sh Oh yes, and uh, hydroelectric dams. That's good as well. Look at that. Lovely. These religious battles though are getting fairly intense. Luckily I do have the world religion and my government and my policy card and gurus so we can do a lot of damage here which is nice but I'm waiting for them to attack me. It's religious warfare everywhere like I'm taking people on in Mali's land, I'm taking people on in Ethiopia's land. Oh yeah look at this Norwegian missionary. That's what we want to see. That's what we call a very easy win. Lord Sucklington is really benefiting from all this though. This is really really good and just like can you just stay near all of this combat as I attack people. Can we destroy the caravel please? Just uh yeah there we go perfect that's looking really good. Every kill every kill just powers up Lord Sucklington even further. And Bob the Builder has finally made the way over to a vampire castle that'll give 20 production to my capital. That's a good start. I could probably do better but for now that's pretty decent. Am I building a railroad through the Pantanal and through what should be the Amazon rainforest which has been entirely cleared? I think I am. Am I environmentally a disaster? Yes you probably could say that as well. And here it is it's the first vampire castle 23 production 12 food 3 gold and all of it heading towards Lisbon now. Beautiful. Oh, it's good. It's good. Bob the Builder, you've got to go somewhere else now. Um, yeah, I like the idea of having one on every continent, so I'm going to send you over to Africa now. And we'll, we'll find something to do. So I've just picked up colonialism, and that gives me colonial taxes, which gives me the 25% gold and 10% production in all cities that are outside of Europe, which is quite good. I think I still need colonial offices for the loyalty though, but it is always worth having a check because cards that once were useful may not be useful going forward. Basically if all of my cities are above three loyalty more I can just about get away with it and actually a couple of these are looking a bit close to the line. Not all of them, but like some of them. Actually just a couple, it's... Where is it? This one. That would be kind of on the edge, as would this one. So I can almost get rid of the card. I think I've got to wait for a couple of governors to appear, then I can do that little swap. Oh, if you ever see, ever see the AI doing this, and it is rare because they so rarely use Inquisitors, but if they ever move an Inquisitor outside of their own territory, attack it immediately. It's an instant kill. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I can pretty much set my watch to the liberation of Cusco now. It's fantastic. Every time I cause some grievances from spreading my religion, just liberate a city. It's all good. This attempted liberation of Indonesia is just fantastic for Lord Sucklington. They just stood on this island as my boats attack either side of it. And it's just like, yum, 117 power now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a renaissance wall. And Lord Sucklington's just like, yes, but I don't respect the wall. So I'm going to attack it. And I'm just like, sure. Or whatever you want to do I'm happy with like just just whatever that's cool hey look it's another aid request for Portugal I'm gonna vote down on religious emergency it doesn't I honestly don't mind how many religious emergencies get put through it's fine I don't even care fling them at me I say fling them at Portugal I'll take it all on my beautiful thick shoulders mmm yes yes that's right take Portuguese aid yes <laughs> oh look at that the religious emergency failed and there was one against India. India, you cheeky, cheeky so-and-so. What are you doing with your religion? Actually, they've spread their religion pretty nicely. It's nothing like my religion, but it's still a good religion. What actually, what is India's religion? What have they do? It was this sort of blue one, wasn't it? Feed the world and crusade. Oh, Gandhi, my ally, Gandhi. I, I you know what? I approve of everything you're doing. Have 5,000 gold. I don't even care. Just have it. See, look, this is how we improve the AI. And then it'll start taking crusade and feed the world like a good AI should. The, actually, do we want to be encouraging that? Probably don't want to be encouraging that. Can I take my gold back please? Well that didn't take nearly as long as I feared it might because well 
certain Lord Sucklington is an absolute unit. 116 combat strength, bam. City taken, liberated to Indonesia. 300 Diplo favor, as well as hopefully, oh yeah, look at that, minus three if that grievance penalty was already removed. Oh yes, perfect stuff. Now I'm hoping that'll really, really calm people down. I'm a force for good, really. People just may not realize it yet. <laughs> It's just something they will they will experience soon enough. Oh well, hello then. Ruhr Valley, 20% production in the city, as well as one production for literally no mines in this city. So, you know, that's pointless. And now, Statue of Liberty in seven turns, you say? Seven turns? Lovely stuff. Actually, I think I've got another trader that I can pop in this city as well. That's good. And uh, I'm tempted to move these things around a little bit right now just to focus on wonder production. But looking on how few people, it's me in Canada, how few people actually have access to civil engineering at the moment. I think we've got a good shot of being able to pay attention to whether or not Canada is building it. We'll keep an eye on this, but pretty much all of Canada's coastal cities are going to be on this east coast of America and we will spot them and we will attack them if they go anywhere near my statue. I of course don't own the statue, but I uh, will remain very precious over it and uh, rather frighteningly so if, if left alone, so that's all good. What's that? Australia One Piece and they're going to pay me? Well, yes, of course then. That sounds wonderful. Ah, oh, my little liberation war went quite nicely. Oh, my grievance penalty with everybody generally has gone from minus 40 to, in some cases, like minus 11. Yeah, this sort of liberation play is doing nicely for me. I've only got minus one now. Oh, that's good. Yes, 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 the world is slowly forgiving me. This is the fun thing about sort of making your aggressive plays early in the game, is that the world kind of then like adjusts to it and goes, yeah, yeah, this is, this is how it always was. We're actually seeing as well, a couple of the empires of the world are beginning to crumble. Like Nubia is disappearing under the weight of a terrible dark age in the middle of Africa here. Yeah, they're gonna lose pretty much every one of their cities. And I think Mali is gonna probably grab this one once the loyalty shakes out. I don't believe Nubia are gonna get that one back. Are Mali in a dark age as well? They are. Maybe Egypt will get it then, I don't, who knows? Congo will probably get these two cities to the south because I believe they're in a normal age. Yep, they are. Ethiopia is in a golden age. Oh, so maybe Ethiopia will gain this one. Still, we're seeing a couple of players shake out into the world now, which I, I love it. I love to see the map evolving like this. It's always really, really good fun. Um, Also, you know, everyone, they, it, it's happened again. Just checking briefly, is this spy called Paul? No. It's not called Paul. Then why is my governor dead? Duarte? Ah, you've clearly been reading from the manual of Paul spying. Terrible. Interesting, one of my spies did well. One? Um, hmm, linguist, come on, that's fine. But like, still, come on. Need better spies. I know I haven't promoted them yet, but it's because I, I haven't had chance, okay? I'm sorry. I'm always excited for this civic. Natural history, water parks, aquariums and more importantly zoos we're actually gonna hopefully fingers crossed hopefully get some cities happy now i don't know if it's possible but we're gonna go and just put down zoos everywhere we can who doesn't like a petting zoo this is all it is they aren't regular zoos there are no lions and tigers here this is just nothing but llamas alpacas maybe some strange looking goats I don't know. It's going to be great. Whatever it is, it's going to be absolutely lovely. Also water parks. Let's have those as well. Because slides. What what more do you need in life than, than random slides? It's great. I could go conservation for naturalists. That would give me a lot of tourism. I'm on 191. And last time I checked, I actually did have a couple. I've got 10 whole tourists, everybody. Huzzah! Yeah, not picking up a monopoly was a, was a problem this game. So maybe that's not the play. Oh dear, I'll go naval tradition just briefly and then, I don't know, let's treat myself. Actually, I'm gonna go nationalism. Sometimes I leave naval tradition because it's a really good one because if you ever need to change your cards for three, you just pick that one and then you can adjust your government like without any cost quite handy. Oh, also, because I'm removing everybody's religion, I noticed that I am actually ruining everyone's loyalty at the same time, <laughs> which is good, because honestly, anything that I ever do at any point that invokes the spirit of absolute chaos, you bet that Ursa likes that. That That is my... That is my RP. That is my that is my absolute joy in life. Just chaos monster. Oh yes. 
What's that? You're standing in the Hajj Sophia, representative of Sunni, a place of religious acceptance and, and helping? Now you're gonna die, you're gonna die. If there's nothing else this game teaches you, setting up just beautiful spaces that can be continually liberated, so good for your economy. Oh, if I sold that favor, it'd be worth so much money. Just the money's, n it's the one thing I don't need right now. I'm absolutely chilling, but yeah. It's it's amazing. I won't lie, there is a slight feeling of relief as we see the Statue of Liberty being built in Lisbon. That is four diplomatic victory points, or 20% of what we need. That brings my stack to a very healthy 17 out of 20. Ho 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 ho! I'm really pleased we got that. Also, Torre de Belém now being built in five turns. Oh, Lisbon's going to become a party hub. At least the game now knows that Lisbon is by far the best city in the world. Look at that. Most industrious, most pious, most educated, most cultured, richest. Not the happiest. People aren't very happy here, but you know, we, we can ignore that. That's, that's fine. Who needs to be happy when they're rich, right? <laughs> right? This is actually one of the fun things about this game, is when your industry's going, it really does get going. Look, metal casting, I'm, I'm boosting through these little techs now. What are we up to? Economics is now next. Corporations, I need a merchant though. 29,000 gold for a merchant, we'll do that in 10 turns. Yeah, that's not a problem. Also, Bob the Builder, he's sort of given up now. Um, this is the second vampire castle. It's not as good as the first one, I'll be honest with you, but it is a bit more food and production for Lisbon. I just wanted one on Africa. Turns out, literally, no no yields down here apart from food, and I was like, the one thing that Lisbon does not need is food. So we're up to 200 production now. Oh yes, I like that. It's like a direct resource grab from South America and Africa. Also, look at it, look at all this going on here. Everyone's liberating themselves. I refuse. Oi, oi! That's where my unit goes. What are you doing? Out of there, you! You're not allowed to liberate yourself. That's my job. I have a monopoly on freedom, don't you know? <laughs> That's what I do. Also, this is my pile of I had nothing else to do boats. It's, it's getting pretty big. I have 4,000 military strength now. Um, it's probably costing me quite a bit. Yep, 300 gold per turn that's costing me there. Um, I, yeah, I probably should be doing something a bit better with this gold, but you know, it's fun. Here's another road request. That's another two victory points. That puts me on 19 out of 20, <laughs> which is good because I'm pretty sure that my computer is beginning to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> this game is have you seen how much how much army everyone's got oh my lord the map is just full absolutely full of units the poor thing has to process this every turn i'm not even the worst like my lands are like inherently quite empty mainly because my boats are all at sea but still this is just nonsense the reason by the way that i'm not making commercial hubs in my big cities is because i'm not owls so i can't get gilded vaults and extra trade routes and there's over 1000 gold per turn coming through this city as soon as i put a commercial hub in it enemy spies are going to be siphoning gold left right and center you can't siphon gold Gold from a harbor. <laughs> I am plunder proof. This is what people don't realize. You don't have to play the spy game if you're impossible to spy on because you're just refusing. See, these are the big brain strats. Uh, I am also just making my way through and just I keep killing Indian apostles. Now, I haven't really finished off anybody entirely, but like I am spreading my religion nicely in this sort of part of the world. It's just this Egyptian religion. It's the only one that I need to still get rid of. But I do have fresh apostles on the way, which is good. Egypt have not sent any uh, units to stop me, which is really, really strange. Because I'm just slowly spreading through now. Africa almost entirely converted to my religion to go alongside South uh, America. Uh, Europe, I'm doing pretty well pushing this through as well. I've done better than I thought I would. 73 cities following my religion now. Long way to go, but we are doing it. This is actually quite an effective victory condition for me. Even Sylvia keeps on leaving all of these inquisitors out and about trying to remove my religion from their lands. Every time you do, you just give me another chance to boost it around. Beautiful. Man, this religious combo is so powerful. 10 from World Religion, 10 from Religious Alliance, 5 from being near a guru, 5 from my policy, 5 from my government, a bit of flanking, and suddenly that's just a regular apostle that can almost one hit. I mean, that should have actually one hit, really? 
But alas, it's fine. And look at that. Oh, spreading my religion to the Middle East now. Beautiful. Torre de Belém. This is in Lisbon. All international trade routes from this city receive two gold for every luxury at the destination. This is making a lot of routes from Lisbon very powerful. As well as cities not on my home continent receive the lowest production city center building they can currently construct. That's basically a lot of walls. Oh yeah, and I've got theater square. I'm building everything. Everything is being built. Oh, we can put through some emergencies of our own now. There's a military emergency against Genghis Khan and a military emergency against Korea. Interesting. Now, I think it was Shanghai, wasn't it? So this city. Well, I do have boats and I would get open borders with people. That would be quite cool. I mean, Shendu, I think was the other one. You know what? I'm going to submit both of these. Yes, we may be able to have some fun after all. <laughs> they will call me the Liberation Hawk. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Really? Really? Again? Oh, a joint formal wall. Who is joining in? Sweden. Don't do that. Come on. There's no need for that, Sweden. Your two cities are the far north of the map. What are you going to do? They think they're safe, don't they? They think, oh, we're just going to join in with this war and nothing matters. It's all good. Well, I'll tell you what, Sweden. I've got a certain plan for you, my friends. <laughs> oh my goodness, stop giving me aid requests. I mean, yes, of course, I want them. Religious emergency? Nah. Military emergency? Yes. Yes, let's just join in with all this. Why not? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's just unravel what's going on here. See, more raid requests have come through. Uh, that's, that's, I think everyone's on this one. Who didn't join in? That's probably the better answer, Genghis Khan's at war. However, military emergency did go through. So, it is myself, China, who I'm now not at war with anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Coupe, uh, Japan... Korea is involved in one emergency, even though there's another one going on. Vietnam and Australia. Cool. That's an interesting bunch of people. And then on this one, it's myself. China again. They love an emergency. Dido. Coupe. Again. Japan really likes this. Vietnam. Australia. I mean, Australia is just absolutely keen for all this to go through. So... Our war with China has disappeared, but I believe I'm still at war with Sweden. Yes, yes I am. So, um, yes, about that. We were going to have some revenge, weren't we? Hello, Norway. Could you do me a solid and declare war on Sweden? Why don't you want to declare war on Sweden? Ugh. Oh. Fine. You know what, Norway? It's a good thing that I am filthy rich. How about 5,000 gold? There you go. Off you pop. Send all of these boats over. In fact, actually, yeah, you know what? Luckily for Sweden, everyone else around them have denounced me. But uh, just, you've now got Norway. You, you, I mean, Sweden thought they could join in with this and slip it through because, uh, you know, I couldn't get to them. But Norway can. <laughs> Now that we can see the map, though, because of these military emergencies, you can see Scythia's empire has sort of fallen apart a little bit. They're like they've lost these two cities, and with that, a lot of the score that was actually keeping Scythia near the top of the game. Yeah, look how far they've fallen. They were second for a long time. Poor Scythia. Is that a Dark Age they've got? Why are they doing so badly at the moment? Yeah, Dark Ages would do that this game. Mongolia, representing Siberia in this game, though, doing absolutely amazing. Oh, and they have a lot of units attacking China. Wow, this is the only Civ that's been absolutely attacking with force. And I'm here for it. That is really cool. Oh, that's a lot of samurai in Japan. Oh my lord, that's amazing. I still can't see much of America. That's the only thing. Canada didn't join the emergency and I always, I always rely on Canada joining an emergency. Goodness me, look how many units there are on this map. It's insane. Well, I guess we'll go and send a token force over to try and deal with Korea and also Mongolia. I do have ironclads, but no coal. But I guess I could buy myself like a, now I could buy myself a fleet of ironclads and just go and sail over and just hit this city until I get it. Maybe that would work. Something like that would work. I've got armies now. It's cool. What else do I want to go for after this point? Now I've got nationalism. Let's go for Scorched Earth. Still liberating Cusco, by the way. <laughs> Still doing it, even to this day. Either the actual diplomatic favor I'm getting is not the important bit here. It's the reduction of grievances. I've actually now reduced my grievances with the world to zero, which is wonderful. So people are actually starting to like me again. I like it. Look, Netherlands likes me now. Scotland likes me now. Byzantium likes me now. Zulu will never like me. I think I've come to terms with that one. I mean, I don't know what I could have done to warrant such aggression from Zulu, but uh, 
you know, I'm sure something. So there is economics, we can now get corporations, we can now get Big Ben and stock exchanges, and actually the strange thing about this game is that I have still yet to get a great merchant, which is unbelievable. Everyone's happy now, which is good, but imagine how happy I'd be with toys! Yay! So I will be actually saving up my faith in gold a little bit, trying to get a merchant, because I believe we had a corporation down in South America, here we go, the Diamonds Corp. 25% gold yield? That sounds wonderful. Let's put a bunch of products into Lisbon and also my northern city. Look at that, that would be awesome. What now? What would help me in this battle? I think flight. Gotta go flight. Or do we go for research labs? Research labs gives me raw science. It would actually probably give me about 200 science across my empire. Something like that. Whereas flight would give me observation balloons. But it takes a little bit longer to get to advanced flight. So I think I'm going to go chemistry it's for now. Build two neighborhoods. Have I really not done that? I don't even know what a neighborhood is. Let's do that. We get neighborhoods sorted. Perfect. Also, let's face it, nobody has been interested in anything I've been doing this game. All you wanted to see was the railroad. So look, I've got a railroad in Portugal. I have a railroad all over South America. I have a railroad in Africa. And I have a railroad in South Africa. Look at that. Delicious. I may have missed a tile there. Ignore that. That is nothing, nothing to see here oh yeah i love it i don't think anyone else has put rail down just me just me for now good to know you know if i don't do it then how can we guarantee that anyone will so you know we need to so one relatively interesting and useful thing about playing on historic speed is that any archaeologist you use well they instantly theme because there's only been a couple of eras before the point that you use them so these are all ancient and they themed automatically hey pretty handy i tell you what this religious war i'm having with gandhi is just spectacular they have apostles they have gurus they have inquisitors i mean the one with saivia i had is more of a sort of guerrilla war but this is an all-out religious bloodbath I am slowly winning it. <laughs> it's been quite good fun, actually, just targeting enemy religions specifically. We've managed to get rid of Mapuches. I'm attacking Indians right now. Egypt's religion, pretty much gone as well. Kemens have lost their religion. Other India lost their religion. Spain's religion I took out. Saivia's I'm working on. Norway's has been taken out. Ethiopia's has been taken out. Nubia's has been taken out. Maori do have one. Mali's has been taken out. So really... There are, I believe, one, two, three, four religions left in the game that have anything to do with anything. I mean, that is, that's pretty good work. We're getting through this. Plus, my religion's now giving me 200 culture per turn. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. Just in itself, that is pretty good. So these little skirmishes, using gurus wherever we can, spreading the religion wherever we can. I have one debater that that is, is basically my sort of shock troop that I'm using to attack the actual apostles wherever I can. The only problem with this particular religious war is that India have left forts everywhere, which mean all my units keep on sort of, I can't press end turn on them. It's one of those really annoying things to happen. Oh, there's another city. Oh, two cities have actually just lost all of their religion. <laughs> well, that's actually the holy city of Delhi taken. Look at that. Yeah, I like this. As I say, Gandhi keeps just throwing religious units at me and I keep going... All right, then. I'll give you a fight. Why not? And I believe with this, that is Africa totally converted. Oh, apart from over. We, we ignore down there. That's just coupe doing coupe things. Wow. Yeah, fair play. Our religion has gone far. Imagine if we were playing Byzantium on this game, by the way, with vampires. Oh, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. Guess what time it is, everybody? It's Cusco Liberation time. Yay! Set your watches to it. Meanwhile, on the Indian subcontinent, the battle of religion wades on. Hundreds of dead apostles with lightning scars all over them just littered beneath Mount Everest. It's been a bloodbath, but... Luckily for me, my religion has come out on top. Well, here we go. 1,194 diplomatic favor. And this is our first chance to close the game out. World religion. Well, that's popped up again. And we know what worked well last time. So we're going to be throwing it on this one again. I'm hoping the AI will give us apathy once more towards this. Mercenary companies. Now, the AI always votes on B. Always votes on B to have cheaper things. I don't know whether it's going to go gold purchasing or production i'm gonna go production force of habit i'm gonna take one vote off this one and throw another three votes into that yeah I, you can never really truly predict which one the ai goes for I, it, it does swing between gold and production a little bit but 
Let's have a look and see what goes on. The fact that I've only got 144 favor coming out of this vote, that is a good sign. That is a really, really good sign. You get to keep a lot of the favor if you fail on whatever vote you're putting through. I don't have enough favor there to give me the impression that I've failed both of them. Hopefully at least one has gone through. Look at this horrible slugging fest I've been doing in Saivia, by the way. These two apostles have been grinding away, just killing Inquisitor after Inquisitor for about... 30 turns now we're only just converting some of these cities problem is you rock up here and it's like oh yeah the cities have like 4,000 conversion on them so unless you've got the faith to actually do that it's crazy <sighs> this game this game it was a special I really really enjoyed it but it took me probably the best part of a week's worth of filming to get this done and we're on like turn 250-ish or something like that on a game this size where all the AI can do is print units. I am so pleased about this. I did not think we'd get a victory and we did. Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you how relieved I am. Should we go and have a look and see what the... We've only got Marcus Aurelius. Oh man, long-term watchers of the channel will know that I always get Marcus Aurelius. I don't know what it is. I just always seems to get that exactly that amount of score. It's my perfect number. Right, look at this wiggle graph. So, even though I only had like a few cities, I constructed the most buildings. Always construct your buildings. That's why humans beat the AI more often than not. Cities captured. Oh my goodness. Who's this red line? Gorgo. Oh, that must have been a city that was liberating itself. Hang on. Did she also then lose cities at an equal number? No. Actually, that's, that's hilarious how few people lost cities. That's, that's mad. Cities founded. Oh man, I only founded two, no, three cities myself. <laughs> That's it. Districts constructed. Yep, again, that just shows you that I was a human doing human things. Great people. I thought I actually had more than that, but I guess I built, you know, I bought a lot of them when they were cheaper, and then the game flipped over to industrial era. Great people, and those were really expensive. There was my culture, my religion. Look at my religion, founding that. That did me huge amounts for culture. Wonderful. Actually, no, that, that wasn't religion, was it? I think religion was probably a little bit further up. This will have been the policy card, the one science and one culture for all trade routes. Really handy. And yeah, there we go. There's my science doing the same thing. Who is this? Is that Congo? I felt bad for that. Congo were having such a good game before I rocked up. Unbelievably, I did not have the most gold this game. <laughs> as soon as the aid requests came through, I think that was, J I'm going to guess Japan. Hang on, where are they? No, Christina. Okay, very similar, but look, everyone just flooding them with gold. They were sat on almost 40,000 gold by the end of the game. Probably didn't have anything to do. Faith generation. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of that. Menelik doing really well, but I removed their religion pretty nicely. Score. I took advantage of the game about turn 150. And again, it was Congo. Look how much stronger Congo has been so many other civs in this game. They have such a big player. I really wish Younglei was in this game. I, I think that they would have done really good. Units killed. That's a lot. How many units did I lose though? Can we even see my line? Oh yeah, we can. Actually, I lost a about 10 to 15 units, something like that. Religions founded. I got my religion. One, two, three, four, five, sixth, I believe. Yeah, people were still founding religions at the end. This was, I, I think we must have rolled over an era or somebody bought a prophet. Like, uh, I think it might have been Menelik doing it. And it unlocked a bunch of prophets at the same time really cheaply. So everyone founded one. And I think that was Menelik. Nubia had one. I think Mali had one. It was really annoying because this is all land I'd converted. Wars declared. Yeah, <laughs> whoopsie. Me being Portugal. Wonders constructed. I did construct quite a few at the end, but I waited until like turn 140 for my first, so that was pretty good. Oh my lord, what a game. What an absolute game. Let's just have one further look at the map. Oh yeah, I built the Taj Mahal, apparently. I don't even remember building this. I think I must have done it out of like clicking and boredom. <laughs> Boredom's the wrong word. Finding something to do between turns. Just build a wonder. Why not? Um, I was really low on era score as well. So gold went through, but my religion did pass through. So honestly, if I hadn't have got that Diplo victory, I was cracking down onto a religious victory. Look how much I'd converted, and I'd knocked out pretty much every religion apart from Scythia's, who I was about to send some reinforcements to. Byzantium's religion, let me just say, they had no religious units. I just would have come in and wiped that really quickly with a couple of well-timed apostles. India, I was having a huge scrap with. I've actually removed most of their religion. I'm just wiping out their apostles now, so that's fine. And then all of this land was pretty 
too much just for ETH for me to convert. Good thing about Coupe is that their cities are so far away from each other that I can just send a couple of apostles over and they've got nothing they can do. Like like these weak Antarctic cities, I can just go convert, 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 and then suddenly you know that's them done it's really handy i already had 19 out of 57 sieves and that was only because i was focusing on the religions yeah look at this we, we were doing really really well diplomacy we ended up winning domination i was never going to do that because i was sticking to portuguese empire land but let me just tell you now with the tech advantage i've got i could easily go on a bit of a crusade I know a lot of people wanted me to unify Iberia. Maybe another game. Maybe another game. But I really enjoyed sticking myself to a very small amount of land and funneling all of my traders out of mainland Portugal. I felt re that was really fun. Really, really fun. Using this as my uh, trading space and then all of my sort of colony land, I guess you could call it, to generate trade routes for me. That was really, really fun. I really enjoyed that. Culture, I was actually starting to pick up some culture, but the lack of a good monopoly was what stopped me from winning that victory. Again, if I was looking to conquer, taking Zulu out and then also the Congo, so rather than just taking these cities, that would have given me a monopoly that would have given me about 400% tourism. So that would have immediately put me up to just over a thousand on everybody. That we would have started. We would have started to absolutely rock on with a culture victory. Then I would have basically beelined it. We would have needed probably another 150 turns though. Because I would have needed to rush Biosphere. And then a couple of things like solar farms, wind farms, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, culture would have been really, really tough. I did have space for a lot of products and a lot of uh, relics and things. Very low relic game today. Very low relic game. I could have gone for reliquaries. I was thinking that uh, instead of pious merchants. I kind of went for a religion that felt good rather than it being particularly good. But I really enjoyed this actually. The extra culture I was getting. 205 per turn from beliefs. Oh, I don't think there was a single city that pious merchants did convert. But what it did was spread a little bit of my religion to everyone I was trading with. Like, do you see this? There's five followers in Philadelphia. I haven't sent a single person over there as well. Calgary has somebody. Windsor. Um, St. John. The, like, there is religion in all of these cities I'm trading with. And that's really fun. Science, I would have been on course for winning. I was now 10 techs ahead of Babylon and the, everyone else was kind of in a pack just behind them. I was doing really, really well on science. Again, it would have taken me probably about 150 turns or so to generate all of the tech and all of the projects I needed to do that science victory, but I had kept a spaceport site. I'd remembered this time for once. It just would have been a patience game and honestly that would have taken absolutely forever and score victory i believe i was winning score victory handsomely as well so we, again just holding out another 248 turns we would have done that as well as mentioned though this game was taking i mean i, I think i'd been filming just for the best part of a week on this game and turns are taking about 15 minutes to generate or so so it's really really slowed down i i had so much fun though i was not expecting there to be so many aid requests I've played big games like this one before, like 20 to 50 player games, and I haven't had a single aid request. So having all of these come through today is crazy. And I mean, it's it's the way that I was able to rush a diplomatic victory. I could have done it in my own time though. So what I would have done is we were having a vote every 30 turns or so, and we basically would have just kept voting. And the benefit of this is because it's not late game voting, there was never an option for the AI to take away diplomacy points from us. We were only ever able to gain them. So we would have kept going, kept going, kept going. We obviously, there are diplo points in the tech and civics trees once you get a little bit further into the game. What a game. I really, really, really enjoyed that. And the reception that it's had, it's been amazing to read all the comments, look at how many people have been viewing and liking. So all of your interaction, I really do appreciate it. It's been, it's been wonderful. Hey, we're going to have to come up with another subscriber special soon, aren't we? So everyone get your hats on and we'll be thinking of something new to put out. And until four turns go past and we get another two Diplo points for winning the Trajan aid request and then we've got another bunch after that one. I'm going to go and lie down for a bit because <laughs> this game has been nuts. Oh, is there... Is, am I normal though? Am I normal? Because all I want to do is come back to this game as Byzantium and just go... Ooh with all of these I mean look at all of the units that we could be fighting with legion after legion of Drumans with a religion that I mean 14 religions following my side that would be taxis of 42 strength 
Oh, it's been ages since I've had a game like that. I, I, oh, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me, game. I'm going to leave this save file in Discord if you want to go and take a look at it, if your computer can load it, because it is relatively amusing. But until the next series, I wish you all well. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all next time. Goodbye! And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Gratis, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amiri C, Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Deeble Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman. Thank you all for your support. It's amazing. See you all next time. Goodbye.